I'm Alex Fox, founder of 5DFilmmaking.com and creator of the 5D Film School DVDs. And I'm Trammell Hudson, creator of the Magic Lantern firmware for the Canon 5D Mark II camera. So we've got a couple of uh, 5D Mark IIs here today. Now this camera shoots video, but there are other cameras, other DSLRs, that shoot HD video as well. Why did you pick this camera to work on? Well, Alex, it's the least expensive full-frame digital still camera and the only full-frame uh, video camera that shoots 1080p video. And like everyone else, I saw Reverie by uh, Vincent Lefort and was just blown away by the possibilities of this revolutionary camera that Canon had released. So you got the camera, you started shooting with it. What happened? Well, we did uh, shot a bunch of sh short films and we ran some limitations of the camera with the early firmware. As you might remember, uh, there was no control over the aperture, the ISO, or the shutter speed during video filming. So we had to do crazy things like shoot entire movies with the lenses twisted halfway off the camera. <laughs> and I actually was lucky because I got my camera and about two days later Canon came out with the, uh, the firmware update. And that 1.1.0 uh, firmware fixed the most glaring problem which was the, the manual exposure control in video mode. However, it still left all of the audio problems. And uh, Tim Smith from Canon uh, gave a talk in which he pointed out that he didn't build this camera for the fil independent filmmaker. It was built for the photojournalists, and they have very different needs from the filmmakers. And as a result, a lot of things like the audio w issues were not addressed. That they were really surprised by the enthusiasm with, with which the independent film community adopted the Canon 5D. And the independent film community was certainly complaining about the audio. Uh, I think one of the biggest uh, workarounds people came up with was doing two-system sound, just like you might do with a film camera. You'd have a standalone audio recorder uh, recording onto a DAT tape or some kind of MP3 recorder, and then the, uh, the camera rolling the actual footage. And that works, but it's a bit of a hassle. And I thought the camera could do better, so I uh, got a firmware dump out of the camera and reverse engineered the audio portion. And once I had that understanding of how the camera worked, I had to keep going. And uh, the end result, though it's still in the process, is the Magic Lantern firmware for the Canon 5D. So while everybody else was complaining, you actually went to your computer and, and fixed it, somehow made, uh, did something about it. <laughs> so we're going to demonstrate some of the functionality of your amazing work here today. We've got two Canon 5D Mark IIs here on the table. Uh, this is basically one uh, stock out of the box, the way it comes with a, a lens, of course. And then what have you got here? Well, we have a Juice Link CX-231 preamp, so we can use professional balanced microphones. We have a set of headphones for monitoring. We have my personal Canon 5D Mark II running a Magic Lantern. We have a uh, Cinevate follow focus, rails, and matte box. And we have a small HD DP1 field monitor. And when you assemble all of this gear, the camera becomes a very small part of a much larger cinema system. Well, it's pretty impressive, I'll tell you that. Now, what we're going to do here, uh, first we talked about demonstrating the audio. So the primary problem with on-camera audio is the AGC, which we'll come back to in a minute. The second problem is there's no way to know how strong the levels are coming into the camera. So we've added these on-screen audio meters with peaking and 5 dB scale so we can know how strong the signal is. Once we know that we're getting signal, we then want to know what's the quality of the signal. So I've enabled headphone monitoring on the AV jack and I can listen to my headphones. You know, when I was shooting the, uh, the promo videos for 5D Film School, I ran into both of those problems. Uh, there was no way to monitor the audio and the gain would ramp up whenever there was any period of silence. So let's go ahead and get these cameras rolling and let's do a little test here. Rolling? Rolling. Okay, and I'm rolling too. AGC, automatic gain control, generates a lot of noise, especially during silence. And then it clamps down harshly. AGC, automatic gain control, generates a lot of noise, especially during silence. and then it clamps down harshly. Well, that's quite a big difference. You could really hear that hiss on the, uh, the non-Magic Lantern camera. 
How did you achieve that? The primary way is by disabling the amps inside the camera because they tend to be noisy and replacing them with an external amp, in this case the uh, juice link, to be able to drive the input from a balanced microphone. And you can really see in the spectrogram the noise floor in the, uh, the stock 5D firmware is much, much higher than it in, with Magic Lantern. It makes a huge difference. So enough about audio. What have you done here with uh, the video side of things to help people get good exposure with this camera? Well, we've added a few different exposure aids, and we can uh, demonstrate some of them on the chroma key. Fantastic. If you've ever tried to work with chroma key footage to key the background out of your image, you know how important it is to light that background evenly. Trammell, is there some way that Magic Lantern can help us with that process? Well, in an upcoming release, we'll have a live waveform display to allow us to light the background and measure the brightness, not by eye, but on this waveform display that you can see here, that uh, you can see that we have, it's very bright on the left-hand side of the screen and gets darker as it goes to the right-hand side. So clearly, this key needs some work. This will not key well. Well, let's uh, see if we can use this waveform to light the background a little better and see if we can do a better job. Let's do it. So we've relit the scene, and you can see that we now have a nice smooth waveform going across it. So I'm going to turn off the waveform, and we're going to start recording. Well, pretty good. Now that waveform is not perfect. It's not perfectly flat, but it's pretty good. It's pretty good. You know, it's and certainly a lot better than we started with. Yeah. So let's see how that keys. All right. Here we are in a... It's a sunny beach? I, I, well, I don't know. Or... Holiday? Is it... Uh, are we, are we in Baghdad? We'll figure it out later. Yes. Okay. So I'm sold. How do I install Magic Lantern on my camera? Well, you go to the website, magiclantern.wikia.com. There's a download link that you'll get a zip file that you can unpack and then copy the magiclantern.fir file to your compact flashcard, put it in the camera, you select uh, upgrade firmware, and it'll say, are you sure? You say yes. And it's not a firmware upgrade like the Canon firmware, where it permanently writes it to the camera. This only writes it uh, to RAM, so that it doesn't modify anything on the camera at all. So does that mean that it's safe? Well, it's not a Canon product, and it's not warranted by them, but it's been downloaded uh, several thousand times, and I've received uh, several hundred emails from users who are successfully using it, and not a single report of any uh, camera failures. So I hope it's pretty safe. That's a pretty good track record. It's pretty good. And how about the price? Is that good too? Uh, it's uh, free as in speech <laughs> that uh, you can uh, you get the full source code under the GPL. So if you're computer literate and know how to program, you can write new extensions for it. I'm really hoping that the 5D Mark II and soon 7D, along with Magic Lantern, will become the open platform for digital 35 millimeter cinematography. If you don't have coding experience, which a lot of cinema, uh, cinematographers and filmmakers don't, uh, you can still help out by donating via the website or uh, by joining the development mailing list and testing out betas, which obviously carry more risk than the stable releases. So what's coming up next? What are you working on now? Well, I'm really glad that uh, it's been such a success so far. Um, one thing I'm really excited about is uh, the ability to control the camera via external devices like this Impero remote. It's a Bluetooth follow focus so that uh, if the camera's on a steady cam or a jib, we can control it, keep everything in focus and in the shot. That's pretty cool. And you think you'll be able to do that just with software? It, just in software. So this will control the camera through the autofocus lenses, autofocus lens motors. That's terrific. Well, Trammell, thank you so much for doing all this great work and for coming in and talking uh, with all of us about it. Well, Alex, this has been a lot of fun. Thank you so much. Well, you're welcome. So, guys, if you want to uh, take a look at this great update that makes a, a terrific product even better, go to the uh, Magic Lantern website, download the product, install it in your camera. And then if you're just in checking out the 5D Film School that I've produced, go to 5dfilmmaking.com and learn to do professional-level productions with your 5D Mark II or other DSLR.